Welcome back. Vice President Kamala Harris set to unveil her economic agenda in North Carolina today. She's expected to say that companies are conducting price gouging. Uh, that could mean that she's going to call for price fixing on food and groceries. We're watching for that. The vice president joined yesterday by President Biden at a Maryland event, even as Harris is reportedly now trying to distance herself from Biden's economic policies. Fox News is Peter Ducey pressing Biden on this yesterday. Watch. How much does it bother you that Vice President Harris might soon, for political reasons, start to distance herself from your economic She's not plan. going to. Enough. Joining me now is Missouri Congressman Eric Burleson, a member of the House Oversight, Transportation and Infrastructure and Education and Workforce Committees. Congressman, thanks very much for being here this morning. What are you expecting from Kamala Harris on her economic plan today? So far, she has said that she's going to make a federal ban on price gouging. What do you think that means? Yeah, I fully expect her to go that populist route, but all, all we have to do is look at countries like Russia, Venezuela, countries that have tried to use these principles to try to control the market. But look, nothing controls price fixing or reduces the prices for customers like a, comp, like a competitor, like competition, like the free market. And yet, this is the, the path that they're going to go down. Just ask Jimmy Carter how price fixing worked when he tried to address the price of gasoline. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, she she's not using the words price fixing, but that's what it looks like, right? I mean, if she's saying that companies are price gouging, then she wants prices at a, at a fixed rate. Yeah, and that's just going to reduce the supply that, that's available to consumers. It's going to be reduced choice, which is ultimately going to be uh, punishing and, and, and suffocating on the American economy. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you about the border crisis. A new Fox News poll shows 87 percent of voters think the situation at the southern border is an emergency or a major problem. Uh, concern for the border surged the most when Americans, with Americans under 30 years old, black voters and Democrats as well. That same poll also revealed 71 percent of voters blamed the border crisis on President Biden's lack of enforcement. Uh, which, of course, we've reported on firsthand uh, in the last four years. 57 percent blame former President Trump and the GOP blocking legislation. So the latest in the migrant crime, a Haitian national arrested in Boston on Tuesday for the rape and battery of a pregnant woman. The suspect entered the country illegally in 2021 near Del Rio, Texas, and was arrested by Border Patrol before being released without a notice to appear with a notice to appear, rather. Congressman, what do you say to, to these polls that also blame you and the Republicans uh, for uh, blocking legislation? And obviously, they're referring to that Senate deal, which would have allowed 5,000 illegals in the country every day. Yeah, I think that we knew that that, that deal was really just painting, you know, a whitewash over the, the problem. It wasn't really fixing the problem. It was just going to absolve the first... 5,000 immigrants that were going to come across the border. Look, the facts don't lie. That We've had over 12 million people cross the southern border, two and a half million no, known gotaways. We've had 99 people that were known suspected terrorists on the terrorist watch list that have entered into this country. These facts don't lie. You have anecdotal stories like the one you just mentioned, where we have people that have been violently assaulted and raped. You have hundreds of thousands of people each year dying of fentanyl poisoning. Most Americans know someone who has been, or a family that's been impacted by the fentanyl poisoning. So they can, all the rhetoric in the world isn't going to eliminate the fact that the American people see and feel the impact of illegal immigration under the Biden-Harris administration. Uh, right. But what I'm asking you is, what do you say to these polls that say voters also blame you and your colleagues? Look, I, and that's, I'll say it again, that the bill that we were, that we were, you know, faced with was only going to ignore the first 5,000. It was only going to ignore the numbers. You don't fix, uh, you don't fix a situation by erasing the first the first few data entries. Mm. Okay. The House Oversight Committee is demanding information from Google now after it admitted that it censored search results on the Trump assassination attempt. Google executives are now facing a renewed call to testify. 
Uh, I want to get your take on this because Google already admitted that they censored the search uh, uh, results for the assassination attempt, and now uh, you and your colleagues want 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 more. That you you want them to testify. Meta's AI chatbot also told some users that the July 13th attempt uh, on Trump's life was fictional, claiming that it was initially meant to avoid spreading false information. Google has been pressed over why its search results did not bring up Trump when users typed in assassination attempt. They say it was aimed at avoiding predictions on political violence, Congressman. What are you and your colleagues going to do about social media who are really controlling the information flow that the rest of us see? Yeah, I think that this is a dangerous, dangerous event when you have big tech that's that's basically censoring the information to the American people. It always appears that it's one sided. It never benefits the Republican candidate for office. It appears to be a very part by a very partisan effort in in errors in algorithms. So I would say th those are the kind of questions that we want to get down to the bottom of. What what are what are the algorithms? What were the errors? And then specifically ask so look Maria, for example, in politics, you know, candidates will pay money to Google and other advertisers just so that when people are searching their opponent, your own name ap appears high in the search results. Google is basically admitting that they were doing this without even Kamala Harris having to pay advertising dollars to do such. Mm -hmm. So, so what are the consequences here? Are can you, you know, can you do anything about it? I mean, what should we expect as a result of Google admitting that they actually manipulated the search results around Trump? Yeah, I think at this point, given the fact that we don't hold the other two branches, we're going to have to just try to shed light and expose and continue to expose. Google and Facebook whenever they do such things. Mm -hmm. All right. Meanwhile, there's this. Former President Trump requested a delay in sentencing in the so-called hush money case against him in New York. He says it's election interference to sentence him before the election. Judge Juan Mershon expected to rule on the request September 16th. This, this sentencing is currently set for September 18th. Your thoughts? Yeah, this was a sham trial. This judge is completely conflicted. Um, I was there for one of the days. I got to actually hear Michael Cohen admit on the stand that he was stealing from President Trump, falsifying um, his expenses, and yet the the one that's pros being prosecuted was was Donald Trump. Everyone knows this is a, a a sham trial, and it should be it should be dropped completely if not pushed beyond the election. All right, we'll be watching that, Congressman. It's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much.